there's a passage in a foreword that Herman Hesse wrote to one of his books in which he says something to the effect of, I don't really want to tell my reader how to feel or what kind of experience to have. Um, and I feel something like that in the sense that I really genuinely just want the reader to have an experience, perhaps not even to take anything away from the book, but to bring something to it. The same way you would bring um, all of your thoughts and ideas and preconceptions to um, the experience of, of meeting someone or, or, or jumping in a river, anything. Um, and perhaps also to bring to that experience um, openness and the possibility of being, uh, being changed. Well, it's funny because in that same passage, after Hesse has just got done saying, I don't want to tell my reader what to experience, he goes on to say something like, but I would love if they got this or that or this or that. Um, I've always found that a little, a little funny, but yeah, maybe over the course of writing the book, I began to think about the ways in which the main character was considering how we inherit our ideas intergenerationally. And particularly in, in the case of this book, uh, I believe he comes to question the ideas of masculinity, the ideas about masculinity that he has inherited. And um, I think it's, uh, it's a rather good and transformative thing for him to, to question those ideas. Inspiration is a tr tricky word. I, I tend to, I tend not to think about writing in those terms. I, I try to, I don't know, live, live in the work and, and show up every day for it. Um, so I think in this case, it, it certainly didn't begin with the story or a story. Uh, that very quickly revealed itself and, and came to came to the fore. But it started with the characters. I had these, there are three main characters in the book, and I, I had um, a really concrete, palpable sense of, of two of them, uh, this man and his, and his wife. And uh, I, I set them down on the page and let them start to talk to one another, and, and they, they talked. I don't know that there's a significance as much as I hope a resonance. I hope that it that it evokes things in, in the mind and body of the reader. The novel was originally called something else, which I which I won't say only because it, it might might be a distraction. But um, that title then came organically from the book itself. It's something that the narrator says at one point. So I might just leave it at that in, in the context of it. He's motivated by vengeance. Um, at least he thinks he's motivated by vengeance. I, I'm interested in the ways in which, both in books and in life, we're perhaps motivated by forces that we're not aware of. And more than that, even, we're motivated by perhaps even the exact opposite of what we think we're motivated by. Um, when I say he thinks he's motivated by vengeance, something something terrible happens to someone he cares, someone he cares about, really two people he cares about. And he, he feels that his only choice is to, is to, um, to take vengeance on, on, on really something that, uh, that doesn't, doesn't deserve his vengeance, something that, uh, that he's really just projecting all of his, his ghosts and his worries and his troubles into. Um, but as I say, I, I'm interested in the ways in which perhaps we are actually, in fact, motivated by something in us that uh, hasn't come to consciousness, or something that is not yet uh, has not yet ripened, has not yet reified. Um, so we perhaps think we're motivated by vengeance when, in fact, we're motivated by forgiveness. We we think we're motivated by by uh, love when, in fact, we're motivated by a kind of hate. I think these things can happen, and I think ultimately we only perhaps realize what it was that was driving us, what what that fire that was driving us was when we get to the, the act that we perform or the, the, the thing that we say.
Well, there are a few different settings in the book. The main uh, action or journey that takes place in the, the harsh, wintry mountains of British Columbia. And then there, there are flashbacks to a life in the Caribbean, to, to a life on the Oregon coast. Uh, but I think that for the most part, that harsh, wintry, uh, difficult landscape of, of the mountains uh, really was a product of, of feeling the internal journey of this character and what his reality was. And I think that there was really only one place in which he might play out the brutal drama of his life and to maybe reach some, some, kind, of, some kind of tenderness. difficult to do, I don't know if I can, but uh, I'd certainly say that it's, it's a love story at its core, um, both a love story between uh, a woman and, and a man, and also uh, the story of, of, of a man's love for his son, um, and I think, you know, within that, that framework, uh, of course, it's also really a kind of adventure. It's a, it's a, it's a story about about a search, a story about uh, a quest. But at the heart of it, maybe, it's really a story about how we come slowly and perhaps painfully to clarify the voices in our lives, uh, to clarify our own voices, to clarify the voices of others, the voices of ghosts in us, all of those, those voices, and, and how that slow journey toward clarity is perhaps redeeming.